Hello everybody, um, I'm here today to talk, to show you, to demo this, uh, this is a binary, to binary coded decimal, um, converter and display, uh, so this right here is the input, um, if you know binary then you know this is 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. And uh, any combination, or any yeah, any combination is just the sum of those. So if we do, let's see, this is two and four. So if we do two and four, we should get six, right? <clears throat> we add two, four, one. That's seven, right? Two, four, one, and eight. It gets us fifteen. All right. And turn all these off, zero. And then we can even go all the way up to the top. We can verify that uh, this first one is 128. Give it some time. It takes, it takes time to propagate through 128. Awesome. Um, you can also check this is 64. We have some time to update. There we go. Uh, we can even flick them all on. That should be 255. That's the largest possible 8-bit uh, number. Just give it a second. There it is, 255. Awesome. And then we can turn this off, get 127. There it is. 63. Thirty-two. Thirty-one. Sorry. Uh, fifteen, and we already saw fifteen, seven, three. Um, and a fun one. So you'll notice you'll notice that if this digit is zero, it doesn't get displayed. Uh, which is useful. Like right now, this is zero, zero, zero. That's coming in if it's not displayed. Just a little demo that that works. I'm gonna plug in a hundred here. Right, so that's 4 plus 32 plus 64, that adds up to 100. And as you can see, it still displays a 0, and the logic for that is pretty simple. If both of these are 0, then you don't display it, not just if this one's 0. So if both are 0, then you don't display it. Anyway, that's neat and everything. The logic to do that is all this over here. Um, it looks complicated. It's not too bad. Uh, basically, what, what it is, th this right here you may recognize this repeating grid pattern. Um, this is just a programmable logic array or ROM or whatever you want to call it that holds the uh, configuration of the patterns for given inputs. So you can see here like this this line here corresponds to three, right? That's one, one, zero, zero in binary. One, one, zero, zero will activate this line. Uh, and as you can see, that corresponds to these torches right here. Um, which then come down these rails to, I guess, this one here. You can actually force that line to three. Uh, turn this on. Right. So that will activate this line. So now the torches are on. It comes over here. Now it's displaying three on this digit. Um, so that's how binary gets turned into the seven segment display. Um, and that's just down here using these, this just a set of seven pistons and a bunch of redstone blocks on a uh, redstone lamp, so that's pretty easy, makes it a nice looking display. Um, over here, this is the binary coded decimal, or this is the binary to binary coded decimal unit, so as you can see, the, the 8 bits come in here, are fed into these inputs, um, and then a bunch of logic happens, and this is this is quite a, uh, quite a mess in here. Um, I stacked it vertically so that it could it would use less space horizontally. Um, so that's fewer chunk updates for one thing. That's also a compact design because we uh, we tend to think of things in two dimensions just because, you know, that's what we look. We see things in two dimensions. We, we read things in two dimensions. It's very difficult for us to visualize things spatially in three dimensions. So if you can utilize the third dimension as much as possible for a single component, uh, then that, that means that its two-dimensional footprint takes up less space. Um, making it easier to work with in a two-dimensional layout, which is why I chose to uh, stack it vertically. 
the design here is essentially essentially this right here. Uh, this is a diagram I found on the internet. You can see the binary value comes in the top through a bunch of these adjuster units, these cascading adjuster units. Uh, and then the binary coded decimal value. What binary coded decimal is, if you're not familiar. So this is, this is an 8-bit binary value. Uh, so this is base 2. But come down here. Uh, I didn't I didn't color code it very well, which is bad of me. I should have done that. These these correspond to the the digits of the decimal representation. So these these four lines here, that is a binary number representing the first decimal digit. And these four here, these are a binary number representing the second decimal digit. And these two are a binary number representing the third decimal digit. Um, so it's de it's a decimal number coded in binary, so it's called binary coded decimal for that reason. Um, converting from 8-bit binary to three decimal binary coded decimal digits is actually pretty, uh, it's not as straightforward as you might think. Um, it uses what's called, I believe the algorithm is called uh, double dabble. So this is basically a hardware implementation of the double dabble um, algorithm. And also, as you can see, if we refer back to the diagram, these, these cascading adjuster units, uh, right? That's these right here. So you can see I've got one there, I've got one there, I've got one there, got one there, there, and there, and there. So that's the, that's the how many is that? Seven adjuster units. Uh, if we look over here, um, oh, right, right. So from the top, so what, what the adjuster does in Double Dabble basically is it compares the value to 4, and if the value is greater than 4, then it adds 3 to it, and then it passes that out, right? So basically, if you pass in 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, you're going to get 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 8, 9, 10, etc., etc. Uh, and that's just, that supports the, uh, that's basically the, the building block of the double dabble um, mechanism. Uh, so you can see here what we've got, we've got for each adjuster unit, there's four inputs, right? So one, two, three, four, you can see I've got three coming in here right now. Um, that is, that's basically these shifted over one. So three coming in, which is not less than four, so that's not really, or not greater than four, so that's not really the best example. But what you can see here is, um, to compare by four, to test four, you test if, if this is one, or if this is one and one of these is one, so uh, some, it's kind of a it's a bit confusing in to say it in plain English. But if you write it out, write out the you know truth tables or whatever, or the combinor, combinatorial logic, or whatever. It's uh, not too bad as you as you can see here, the circuitry to do that right. These two torches basically, when those conditions are met, th this torch and this torch will be on, because this line will be off, because this torch will be off and this torch will be off. Um, so. When those conditions are met, torches will be on, so that's 3. And then what this is, is this is an outer unit. So I've got uh, XOR, 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 a bunch of XOR gates. I've also got some carry lines here coming through. Uh, and that's a... That is an outer unit, is what that forms. Uh, and then, of course, the outputs here. So the, this output comes down all the way to this one, which you can see corresponds to this part of the diagram. Uh, and then just zero coming in here, which is really silly. I don't know. I don't know why. I guess for consistency's sake, even though I know this is always going to be zero, I still you know wire it up as if it might not be zero someday. Um, because I don't know. I guess it's interesting. Um, I'm just going to turn this off to zero. So this this is kind of um, very rudimentary. 256 or 9-bit support up to a certain point. Uh, as you can see, the this is the this is the zero that comes in. So we can actually I can put a torch here, and if I flip this on, I should see 256 on the display. There we are. So I I, I can get some 9-bit numbers. Obviously, if I put all ones, I don't think I'll get 511. Um, this is only one way to find out. Let's find this out. In a second to adjust. So I, I this right here, this this uh, uh, nine ones in binary, that's five hundred and eleven in decimal. Okay. 
Okay, so we're at 95. Um, that's strange. Jump up this way. Let's see here. So, 511. Uh, I think I lopped off a bunch of... Oh, I, I know what the problem is. The problem is, is this, this design that I took, it just fixes these upper two digits to zero. And five, what would five be? So 511, that'd be one, one. Okay, so yeah, what, what, we're not even close. So as, as you can see, it doesn't work for um, all ones, but it, it does work for 256, as we saw. Uh, it should work for 257 as well. Right. 257, and this will be 259. Right, so there's there's some 9-bit support there. Um, but obviously this is an 8-bit unit, so we're only concerned with the 8-bit um, the 8-bit uh, scenario. Um, I guess for the sake of the stream, why don't I why don't I do something really neat? I like to, I like to do this a lot with my binary designs. I'm gonna replace this all the wool here for my logic design. I'm gonna place all this wool with redstone lamps, and then we can watch the values propagate through. Uh, will cause quite a considerable bit of lag, but that's what works. So, so place roll and stone. Land. So that works. It's going. It's going. All right. So that's a bunch of the that's a bunch of the design. Uh, I'll do this one too. I have to these. All right, that's a bunch of redstone lamps. Um, obviously, there's some missing, but whoops. So, 128. Let's do 128. Let's watch this. Let's watch this guy propagate through. There we go. 128. So you you can kind of see the values trickle down. This should be 192, I believe. See the values trickle down through the thing and come up through the ROM. Yep, 192. All right. Uh, 64. Right. Trickle through. And come up the bottom. Ooh. Oh, on that leg. 64. Let's go down to zero again. Zeros trickle through. And zero. Awesome. All right. So I'm just going to. Do. And then we can undo twice, right? Yeah. 50. Alright, and that is the that is my 8-bit binary code of decimal. Um oh I guess the only thing I didn't cover is the zeros. So you can see right now. You can see right now the second digit is zero, and the way that works is if you come down here, so you it's only you only want it to be invisible if um, the last, the most significant two digits are zero as well. So what we do is we take, that's that corresponds to this, 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 this. So these six bits of the binary, the 10 bit binary code of decimal representation, um, if all of those are zero, then we want that digit to be invisible. So what we do is we, we do basically big old OR gates. So we take this guy up, 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 and this, this lab's just to ensure the value doesn't go back down onto another guy. This guy, this guy, this guy, and if any of them are one, then this torch goes off. But since all of them are zero, this torch is on, and the signal comes up here, uh, and then it goes in the back of this ROM, so you can see here, um, signal's one, so it comes through here, it turns all these on, and then power comes across all these lines, uh, and, de and deactivates all the torches. In fact, deactivates all the torches, so all these lines are off, and then we don't get any display. Um, if we wanted to display a particular digit, like let's say we wanted to display like only the bottom line, uh, what we could do is we could add another ROM line here. We could basically add like sort of like a NOT gate like this. So we could add a, a, a basic inverter here, right? Actually, which one's underscore? Underscore. That's this very bottom one, isn't it? So that would actually be pretty 
straightforward to do right now. I want to do that right now. So. This goes up this way. Right. Uh, so we want underscore when this is all the torch there. And just to test the propagation, I'm going to turn that on for now. Repeater there. All right. So now, now if we're hiding this digit, now if this is on, and so we're hiding that digit, this is off, and we'll have a torch here. As the torch comes through, and the circum circum. Oh, it doesn't make it. All right. Easy enough fix. Torch comes through. Circum 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 circum. And gives us a nice underscore. And so that's cool. And also, if we want to do an underscore on the other digit, uh, then we can put a we can just put a torch on the zero glyph because if this guy's zero, then it's hidden as well. So that that's a little more straightforward. So now we can see we have underscores in places in place of zeros. Um, if I give it a nice big number, if I if I put in a hundred again, we should still see the zero glyph. That's not right. It's only like ninety something. 97, 100, right? So that's that's the basics of how it works. Um, yeah, uh, I guess thank you for watching. Um, I didn't do, go with the instant logic this time. If I had gone with the instant logic, it would have been pretty big. As you can see, this is a single adder. Each row here is a single adder. If I come over here to my instant adder, which is actually broken at the moment, you can see this whole thing here is an adder, so this would be probably five times the size if I had built it with uh, with instant logic. Um, yeah, it's a pretty neat looking thing. Uh, something I did uh, last, somebody did Thursday. Uh, nice way to kill an afternoon. Uh, yeah, very happy with how it works. Um, just thank you for watching. And see more awesome. Cool. Well. Uh, see you guys next time.